Okay, we were just talking about means and methods and design intent, the GC's role and the architect's role. Let's consider this for a moment. Wait a minute. Are you saying the architect does not have any say in the methods of construction for a project? Does that actually make any sense? Like, clearly you have quite a bit to say about the methods of construction or of a project. You're going to have on your drawing sets, well, how the concrete's going to work and what kind of uh, formwork to use for that concrete and the spacing on the rebar and uh, how you're going to put an anchor bolt in at every six feet in order to put the uh, sill plate on and uh, what the method of doing the construction for the walls up above and like all of those things are things that you're drawing and those are clearly construction means and methods. So what are we talking about here? How do we start to get this bright line separation? Well, that bright line separation, I think the easiest way to think about it, specifically with design, bid, build, is this idea that the timeline of the project speaks to the issue. So if we're the architects and we're going along through schematic design, design development, then maybe we get through CD sets. So we've got you know, a bunch of different phases. We've been working with the owner. We get to bidding. And then eventually, now, finally, a contractor is chosen, and that contractor takes over the construction process. And up until this point, up until that moment, all of those issues about the materiality, the sequencing, the, all those means and methods issues, they're all still conceptual. They're all still on paper. They're, there's nothing, uh, there's no reality to them. Uh, other than they're contractual in a, in a way, but there's no other kind of physicality, that's probably a better term, uh, there's no physicality to them. So the architect is kind of in control at those stages, but there's also no general contractor, so there's nobody else that could be in control at that point. At this point, we now have the GC, and this is the point where everything moves from that conceptual into that physical. And so at this point, even though you've been talking about those means and method issues, uh, at this point, there's going to be a big change. And now that's all in the general contractor's purview. And it's not in your purview. Now, you still have a role in the discussion. You're still there to be able to help the general contractor understand what the issues are. You still have your structural engineers, your mechanical engineers, your other consultants uh, as part of the discussion. And so uh, people are checking back with them to get the, the correct measurements or the number of bolts or whatever it happens to be. But they are now responsible. It's now in their control and they are asking for that additional information. So you're supplying the information when asked but they are in control. So even though you do actually have quite a bit to do with means and methods, there's that moment in the sand, that line in the sand where you just say, all right, we now have a general contractor. Our role in that is done. And it was never anything other than an idea, a conceptualization of what the means and methods should be. Their role has always been all about the actualization of those means and methods. So your role always was, it's means and methods, but it's always been a conceptualization of them. Their role is always a actualization of the physicality of the project. So this can get a little confusing and you could imagine on the exam that you'll get a question. In fact, I can almost guarantee you'll get a question about the idea of means and methods. I have no idea what form that question would take, uh, but there'll be something on the exam that says, all right, here's a situation. You walk onto a job site, you know, certain things are happening and you want to say this, but you shouldn't because that would be means and methods now and so you shouldn't, you shouldn't be taking that responsibility on, right? There's gonna be a question like that where all of the answers will sound completely reasonable unless you start to think about this diagram. So from here, it's a concept, and from here, it's actual. And if you can kind of imagine that moment, that split, when the architect's ideas about the means and methods, the how this thing is actually going to get produced, when those go from being an idea, a concept, to being an actual thing, an actual process, that's that moment. That's no longer the architect's role. It's now the general contractor's role. So we're kind of overemphasizing this because 
It's a clear issue. It's an easy one to ask questions about, and it's something you should feel very comfortable about. It's also a huge issue out in the field. Architects are constantly saying things on the job site that they really shouldn't be saying. That's not their responsibility. And so once they're saying those things, either just verbally out in the field to a plumber saying, hey, stop. Well, as soon as you say, hey, stop, you're now talking about the schedule. You have now taken over responsibility for the schedule. Now, that doesn't mean that everything's going to suddenly stop and everybody's going to look to you to say, well, should I start pouring you know, the paint out of the can? And into the, you know, like They're not going to do it like that. We're really talking about just controlling uh, the litigation problems down the road, keeping it clear contractually. The only people who should be able to say stop on a job site are the general contractor and the owner. And the owner can say stop because it's the owner. They own the project, right? They have all kinds of rights uh, in that process. Now, there might be certain aspects to how they say stop that are contractually organized, but they have the ability to say stop, and the general contractor has the ability to say stop, but you, as the architect, do not have the ability to say stop without it having larger ramifications than you should really be willing to live with. Now, that doesn't mean you can't say, wait a minute, something's not right here. Let's get the general over here, to get the GC over, and have a conversation. Right? That's a reasonable thing. It may totally be a reasonable moment where you can talk with the general contractor and they have a conversation with the plumber. Everybody realizes, oh, a mistake has been made. Or it may be that the general contractor actually has more information than you do. You may be saying, stop, you're putting the toilet in the wrong location. But in fact, they may have had a conversation that morning with the owner who said, you know, I've never liked that part of the design. Move the toilet over two feet. And so you're thinking that you have all of the information, but in fact, the general contractor may actually have more up-to-date information. Remember, they're in control of that actualization. It's a totally reasonable thing that the owner might be able to say to them. They may just be standing there and realize they just don't like the spacing. And so they're telling the general contractor to make a change. They would have to honor that, but then you would be then telling the plumber, no, stop really like you don't have the full information that's why they want you to be together in those meetings that's why the sort of documentation of the process becomes so important because there's so much information out there it's very hard for any one of the different players to have all the information at their fingertips so that's why the idea of the repetitive meetings the weekly meetings or the monthly meetings uh, that's why everybody wants to have very clear logs of uh, questions and answers have very clear uh, logs of submittals of shop drawings and and uh, product placements and all of those different things that you want to keep the organization of the information as clear as possible because there's so many moments where things change and you don't want to accidentally take over uh, something like the schedule, something like the sequencing of um, methods of construction. Any of those things are the contractor's job, not your job. So like I said, okay to have a conversation about it, okay to be part of the discussion. They may even ask your advice and that's completely reasonable uh, and you can give your advice on those issues as long as you are not telling somebody how to do the means and methods on the job site.